Hi everybody, welcome to Active Self Protection Extra here in the 338 Club at C2 Tactical with my friend Tim Forshee, criminal defense lawyer especial and judge pro tem. Especial. Especial, oh. right? I like that. We live in Arizona, you know, we got <laughs> what, dual lingua, like you know. Uh, anyways, uh, and I want to talk today, uh, a few weeks ago we had the incident in the bodega in New York City. Um, Jose Alba, it's Dominican, I'm not sure if he pronounces it Jose or Jose, you'll have to forgive me on that. Um, and I want to talk about the prosecution and how this went down with the guy who's got the inside baseball. To win the fight after the fight, you need help. After a use of force, I trust Firearms Legal Protection to help me win the fight for the rest of my life. From their 24-7 attorney answered hotline to coverage for the use of all legal tools, Firearms Legal Protection has you covered. Get a discount by signing up at the link below. Well, I certainly don't have much inside baseball on politics or well, prosecutions in New York, but but you but, know yeah, how this self defense works. in general, sure, sure, yeah. So, so if you go and you look at the story, the video goes viral because um, the the facts of the case that have been established so far. This woman comes in to buy her child a pack of chips on an EBT. It doesn't have enough money. He declines. He says, "I can't do that." She, they have an argument about it. She says, "My boyfriend's going to come back and kick your butt." Boyfriend does come back. He does. <laughs> and I mean, so, so when you look at it, when I did the analysis of it, he pushed him. It's not good. That's assault. Grabbed him. Also assault. Moved him. Also assault. And in response to that, Alba grabbed a knife from behind his counter and stabbed him to death. Um, at some point after the initial stabbing, the girlfriend drew a knife out of her out of her purse. Are we sure that she stabbed him after the, the stabbing I, of so, the guy? So there's because some I, discussion, I, I different stories on there's that. There's some yeah. discussion on that, but at least we know that the, the attacker, we'll call him that, mm -hmm. did not have a weapon, Correct. but he was younger and stronger mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, Alba has a you know a, a um, white beard mm -hmm. and was 61 years old. Also, I think at some point wasn't it fair to say that Alba was in a lower position? I think he may have been seated and the other guy well, was standing. Well, so the first push, he right. pushed him down, okay. and that made him sit. And then the guy screamed at him some more, picked him up, jerked mm -hmm. him up out of his chair. None of that's justifiable conduct. Correct. That's all criminal activity that is is deplorable. Uh, but then the Manhattan DA came back and said, wait a minute, stabbing this guy to death over this, that is a disproportionate use of force mm -hmm. and charged him with murder. Mm -hmm. Set a huge bail because he had um, a Dominican passport and, or he had a, a passport and a trip booked to the Dominican Republic where he is from like two weeks later. And so they're like, hey, we don't want that. We want this uh -huh. guy remanded. I uh, want a huge bail and we want his passport. Big public outcry, uh -huh. okay, big public outcry, including some interesting stuff about surrounding district attorneys weighing in on this because people said, wait a minute, that's not cool, this isn't right. So then the district attorney uh, in this case came back and said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say I can't beyond a reasonable doubt prove that this wasn't self-defense and so I'm going to decline to prosecute. Right. So that's the facts of the case. Mm -hmm. so, so tell us, Tim, in, in your experience, how does stuff like this happen that we originally are going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to post charges of murder to nothing? Well, part of that is, is that you, you, want to, you want to grab somebody before they get away and then give yourself time to evaluate whether they should mm. be let away. Let's, let's not forget that, right? So a lot of times you'll see some, trick. somebody will be arrested, charged with a big crime, maybe you have a large bond posted. And then in theory, now that we know they're in custody, we know society's safe from that person. Now we can have a conversation about what we should actually be doing. Sometimes you see that. I think that might have been what happened here. I think the, the knee-jerk reaction here is that this guy used lethal force when he probably wasn't reasonably in fear for his own life. My thing is, when I first watched the video, in fact, you and I talked about this, I think, that maybe the day it happened or the yeah. day after, and I think we kind of disagreed maybe at that time, uh, politely as colleagues, which direction this thing was going to take. And I said, I think it's cloudy enough. I think it's murky enough that if I was defending him, I would say our chances would be pretty good at getting an acquittal. That's another way of saying, as a former prosecutor, I was only prosecuted for two years, but it's another way of saying that I don't know that I'd prosecute this. Because right. in theory, you have a duty to the public to only prosecute winnable cases. Sure. If you have a reasonable doubt as to whether the jury would return a verdict of guilty, you're not supposed to prosecute it. Right. And so I think that in theory, this probably worked out the way it should have. They grabbed him. They charged him, they got some more information, they got a copy of the video, people watched it, they probably round tabled it down the charging bureau, and somebody, I think, now, it could have been political pressure, because there was a lot of that going on, like you said, a lot of it. Was it was a big public It was outbreak. national, it was all over the country, people yeah. were talking about this. Um, I was a little surprised that, that New York, the New York political machine, the New York governmental machine, 
basically responded to that public outcry the way they did. Because my my thought would be, and I, in fact, I was just in New York for a week within the last month. My thought would be that the uh, the, 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 the prevailing way they would look at this in New York would be no, no, Not we don't good. use we don't use self defense in cases like this. You know, that's just I was over the over the top. Yeah. So I was kind of surprised that it turned out the way it did. Um, I don't want to say pleasantly surprised because I do think the guy probably overreacted. But was it a understandable overreaction? You know, this guy pushes me down. I'm now below him. He's taller, younger, stronger, pushing me, aggressive. Uh, you know, it, he gets one good jacking on the side of my jaw and maybe he sees the knife next to the cash register and he's stabbing me with my own knife. I mean, there's a lot of ways you could... Of course, we got to be careful with speculating what could happen. That's just it. But that's the kind of things that juries do. And as a defense attorney, don't forget, I don't have to convince the jury. I have to convince a juror. Right. If I just have one juror that's convinced that they're not convinced, I win. And I don't think that would be that hard in a case like this. And, and I think that's not a bug of the judicial system. It's a feature. That's why it's supposed to work that's, that way. Exactly. I mean, we say our, our, our system is built on we'd rather 100 guilty men go free than one innocent exactly. man go to prison. We know that's not what actually happens, mm -hmm. but that's the goal. That's the ideal. That's, that's what the we ideal. Mm -hmm. I thought it was interesting, though, that the district attorney did not say we believe this was justified conduct. Right. Well, they can't really do that because now if they do that, they're encouraging vigilanteism. Right. I and mean, that's how they would view that. So. Instead, he said, I don't know that I can prove beyond a reasonable doubt right. that it wasn't justified conduct. That's the proper answer, actually, though. Yeah? It is, yeah. It is. Because, again, you hate to CYA, but you've got to CYA. I mean, that's, a, that's an elected governmental position. And, again, you don't want to be seen as encouraging. You know, it's like when I watch one of the Batman movies. Now, you get all these Batman wannabes running around out there. You know, Batman's a hero. You don't want to make this guy a hero. I mean, it was, you know, was there other ways this could have been handled? Oh my gosh, yes, of course there were. Also, I'd be very interested to know if when the girlfriend stabbed him, because I heard one news report that they thought maybe he'd been stabbed by the girlfriend prior to the to the guy. And if that's Some the stuff case, that's now, not established, right? No, it's not established. But but you see the difference there. If, if there's a, yeah. if there's a couple that are attacking me, and one of the one of that couple has already stabbed me, totally I think that world. changes the, the whole complexion of the case. Yeah, it does. So. And you know, I think a lot of people responded too because he looked older, so we have a disparity of force. Sure. sure. Except for you know, under New York law, he's not a protected person. He's mm -hmm. 61. New York's law starts at 65. Uh, and and okay, he's got a gray beard. Well, but the thing I about that too. is, that's a hard letter thing that can be used to protect a 65-year-old who looks like Jack LaLanne. Right. Right. What if I'm 40 and I have muscular dystrophy? Yeah, then you're going to be protected. Disparity of force too. comes back in. So if you've got a smaller guy who is older and weaker, disparity of force still applies. It's still just applies. not statutory disparity of force. Yeah. So Now, uh, to me, on the other side, I, I, I still stand behind. I think, I think he overreacted. I, I do, think, too. I think I it was too. too much. I do, too. Uh, now, of course, the district attorney has seen far more information than we have in sure. the public and decided, nah, I'm not going to prosecute this. Mm -hmm. Whether that was for political reasons or, or just good prosecutorial reasons. Right. Hey, you know, I looked at it. Meh. One of the guys in my office says, I don't think we can get a conviction on right. this, so we're morally and ethically obligated not to prosecute. Don't forget, in theory, I mean, nobody can put the actual percentages on it, but if I'm if I'm 75% sure that you did something, yeah. I'm going to find you not guilty. Yeah, not guilty right? is the right. And, you know, that's, that's pretty astounding when people don't realize that. How could O.J. Simpson have been... Uh, found not guilty criminally and then found liable in a civil suit. That's because the burdens of proof are, are so much different. And, uh, and, and, you know, again, 75, 80, 85 percent likely you did it. I'm theoretically bound to, to release you. Yeah. So, you know, at that point, I think in this one, it was muddy enough that I think that was probably the, the proper decision. And I don't say that praising what this guy did. Right. I say it in support of the way our system is supposed to work. So, so I, I would argue uh, in my opinion for what it's worth that as good sane sober moral prudent people we use proportional force mm -hmm. we use ordinary physical force to resist an ordinary assault we use deadly force only when it's immediately necessary to stop the the threat of death or great bodily harm upon our person or upon someone that we're legally obligated to love uh that's it Someone we're legally obligated to love. Yes. I love that. Yeah. And, and <laughs> so that's it. And so I think this was an overreaction. I it think was. having some more options is a good thing. Um, I, I, I stand by all of that. But that doesn't mean it was criminal. Correct. Now, I will also say this at the end. I think if, uh, if Mr. Alba was an off-duty cop, mm -hmm. people would be freaking out. Absolutely. And the opposite direction. How Absolutely. dare this guy murder that guy? Absolutely. 
Uh, and so, so I think sometimes let's be careful that, we're, that, we, that we understand the principles here rather than simply a knee jerk because we, we don't like criminals. Mm -hmm. I don't like criminals either. And in some sense, listen, don't put your hands on nobody. You won't have these problems, right? Amen. I, I love over a bag of chips. Right. I literally gave his life over a bag of chips. Over a bag of chips. And so. Oh, you know, one thing I wanted to, I did quickly want to point yeah, out yeah. That, that in this scenario, the one thing I think also helps the defendant is the fact that it, it doesn't appear that there's any avenue of, of egress available to no, him. No, he was stuck in the he back. Was, he's stuck in that little cubby, right? Well, and when he the guy takes him around, he's got a hold of him. He's not getting away he's from this guy. He's not getting away from this guy. And I think that also would, would weigh in my in my mind if I was determining yeah. whether to prosecute this guy. Yeah. So even in a state with the duty to retreat, if you don't have the capability of retreat, then, exactly. then it abrogates. Exactly. So no big deal. Tough, tough situation. Yeah. I think that I don't think that, that it was the best outcome here. Uh, in terms of the defensive encounter, I think I'm I'm glad that they ended up not charging him. I don't mm -hmm. think, you know, I think he overreacted, but I don't think he should spend a bunch of time behind bars. Right. Or the rest of his life. Or the rest yeah. of his life yeah. behind bars for sure. So just remember, you're going to get prosecuted yeah. for this stuff, friends. And, and those sleepless nights and those lawyer bills never go away. Tim, appreciate the insight. Always.